Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your mm. boy, Stanley. All right, we coming in with this week's Love and Marriage Huntsville Big Depression Energy. We apologize yeah. we're a day late, but we had some house projects going on around here. So yeah. we just couldn't stop in the middle of the project and just watch a show, get on camera, go back to it. How Home is first. Yeah. So let's go ahead and Do get into it. a little bit of bathroom renovation. Yes, God. Yeah. Pray for us. <laughs> but anyway, so coming off of what was happening on last week where Marcel dropped the big bomb on us that he feels like he is in depression, right? So this week, Kimmy goes in there to check on Tisha to make sure that, you know, Tisha, that little thing that happened at the altar, like pretty much if you really think about it, she got left at the altar in so many words. Yeah. And so she was like, that little thing, did that hurt your feelings? Like... How are you feeling about her, how everything went? And she really didn't answer it, but she went on to say that Marcel, you know, expressing that he feels depressed was like, wow. It was like, new news to her. Yeah, she was yeah. like, I knew that something was off. These last three years have been really bad, really tough for us as a married couple. So that's why I was pushing the issue with going to therapy. But I didn't know that this was something that he was secretly feeling like he was dealing with on his own. So, you know, Kimmy was like, you know, I'm here for you. You know, we worked out our stuff. It's all to the good. But this is also the day that they're packing up to go back to Huntsville, right? So we're going to move over to, to the men, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they, well, Marceau is in the kitchen. And I say Marceau is so me. When we're on vacation on that last day, uh -huh. I don't give a rat's say if it don't go together. We can have some broccoli. Yep. <laughs> we can have some chicken wings. Everything in there about to get cooked hey, up. Hey, we ain't wasting nothing. We ain't wasting nothing. If we got to ask the people next door, hey, y'all hungry? <laughs> we'll just open the door and let y'all come slide up. This is before COVID, though. You know, <laughs> um, come on, slide through, get you a plate. Because, you know, we country for We feed neighborhood around here. Right. <laughs> so he was like, you know, I got these steaks. And I ain't about to let these good steaks go to waste. They look good too, Marceau. Now, I don't know if you really cooked them or not because you had all, all that good white on. But, and I ain't see a speck of grease or nothing on that white. So I don't think you cooked that. And he me. cooked steaks for all the fellas except for uh, Lewis. He ain't deserve yeah. one. That's what happens when you run your mouse. <coughs> eat them words. That's what happened with Pillow Top. <laughs> <laughs> Say, eat your words. Uh -huh. This will teach you next time to keep your goddamn mouth shut. Yeah. So now the men are having this conversation, right? Because now they want they want to talk about this thing, like, and I like how they can, because for someone like us that are trying to, you know, build wealth and grow and do your own thing, build build businesses and whatever, right? We don't even know what that kind of pressure feels like. Like we know what the pressure of working a nine to five, having your side hustles, having YouTube, because this is a business as well having those things to manage and grow and cultivate mm -hmm. and still making sure that your core values are intact, making sure right. that you are still having time for each other. I mean, example, yesterday, yeah. <laughs> you know, we had things going on in our house that we had to, we had to manage and we couldn't do this. So I can't imagine being in that position. And they had this great dialogue of, being overachievers or being high achievers, high achievers. the cost of the being a high the cost of being, being a high here achiever. yeah because you always have to look at okay <clears throat> now i have employees so i can't stop because i'm tired because if i stop their the, household no stops. stops if i just settle in what i'm doing right now and be okay with that if something happens to that and that fails then we go back to you know, we always have that thing playing in our head. Right. Am I going to go back to the church sleeping on the church pews? Because that's where Marcel's well, well, story yeah, goes, yeah. you know? <laughs> For me, I grew up in the trailer park. Am I going to be back in the trailer park, you know? Yeah. Um, so I get it. So. Um, but it was powerful, like, when he said, this is the first time in my life that I've traded so much time for dollars for dollars and that's one of the things that we talk about all the time is that mm -hmm. we just so regret doing that but we actually working towards now where 
you know, getting into the thing of uh, building passive income, right. so that when you do the work one time, the it income will <clears throat> the income will continue to come in. Doesn't mean that you're still not going to work because you're still going to have to watch, watch the very it. thing that's producing the income. Right. But you gonna have to keep on going out day after day, day after day to make it work yeah. to bring money in your house. Yeah. So what I was hearing from the men at the table, you know, because you gotta kind of read through bro code because. For me, it was big that Marceau even said the word depressed because mm -hmm. most men would say, oh, I ain't feeling like myself or I ain't, you know, I'm I ain't have, got no I'm energy, a bad day, bro. Bad, day. But he, bad week, bad yeah, month, so bad he said, year. Yeah. But then here come Martel. Martel was like, hold on. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's me too. Maybe, maybe I'm depressed too. Because I got, I got days where I, I, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't, don't want to leave the house. I don't want to leave the house. You know, I just want to be with my kids. And you know, I think about all the stuff that I did in my life. You know, yeah. the Ike Turner comes out of it. Man. <laughs> you know, I think about all the things, and I, I you know, maybe I need to. I need to talk to somebody about that too. <laughs> Not laughing at it. No, you. But <laughs> at the same time, the whole time <clears throat> that Martell started to talk about, well, maybe I got it too. I thought about my mama and my aunties. Baby, if you drop that in the comments if this happens in your family. Y'all get they get together, right? And they'll all be talking about, oh shoot. Man, my hip hurt. Oh, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. I went to the doctor last week, man. They had to give me a shot in my hip. Uh -huh. They put me on prednisone. <laughs> I don't gain 20 pounds. Well, well, what'd they say wrong with you, man? They said I got the arthritis and the gout. And the gout. Well, yeah. maybe that's what's wrong with me. <laughs> what kind of medicine they got you on? Well, you got an extra one? <laughs> nah, I can't. Mm -mm. Scratch that. I didn't say that out loud. But anyway, so that's what it reminded me of. Like, maybe Ooh. that's what's going on with me, too. That's a good comparison and a good thing to kind of analyze to see if that's really you because everybody shows sign of depression differently. Yeah. So there's no cookie cutter to it. And like, we're going to talk about this a little later, but so I don't know if I want to talk about Tiffany and Destiny, but I guess we have to. So Destiny pulled Tiffany to the side, which I think is big of her because I wouldn't have done it because real talk, you're not going to come in and start this war with me and then me come to you and tell you hey let's figure out a way to work this out buck you i don't give a damn if we work this out or not because i don't even like you yeah you're right that is big of uh of, of, of uh, and i'm not that big got her name that quick yeah yeah for her to do that i would have thought tiffany would have did that. she should have done it yeah. because that yeah. would have showed her that it was genuine right that <laughs> okay maybe i did come in and to this situation wrong and what do I have to do to, let's just start fresh. And if you see that I am doing something that offends you, check me right out. You know, do something like that. But for me, the person that you came in and offended, I'm not going to tell you nothing. I know the producers had to tell her to do that. Because I, no. Nah. Man, you got to be Christ-like. What you talking about? I'm Christ-like. <laughs> Did you <laughs> read the Bible? Hey. God said strike him. He said turn down the cheek too. And not talking about butt cheeks yeah, either. That's what I mean. Jesus didn't say go over there and figure out how to make a new. He said deuces. Turn down the cheek. That's yeah. what I do. Full of our forgiveness, man. Oh, I can forgive you. He said 40 you. times 40 got to be forgiveness, man. I can forgive you over here. You but, can... but don't mean you got to reconnect. That's what you trying to say? God darn you. <laughs> God darn right. Hey, but the Lord forgive us and he reconnects with us. So what if he did that? But we got to go to him. He don't keep coming back to us. He do, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Cause I know some Bible scholars and they're gonna be like, "Oh no, 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 Lynette, that ain't right." <laughs> Calm down, it ain't Sunday, it's Monday. <laughs> so, so they're gonna try to do what they're gonna do. So Tiffany goes over there to talk to Mel, and Mel is kind of like you know showing her her um storage closet where she has that line, "God said go." Y'all all remember? We all saw the the kerfuffle. That happened when her and Martell got into mm -hmm. it and she got on live and she pretty much just laid it all the way out. People was telling her, shut up. She was like, nope, I prayed about it and God said, go. I like how she could just, she could just mark it. Like real talk, like, oh, catchy. Boom. Mm -hmm. Make money off it. She said it's been a hit. Yeah. And it is, it's because it's universal. It kind of reminds right. me of the God is dope or yeah. the God is. Uh-huh. You can make it fit. Go. Yeah, yeah, you can make it fit whatever you needed to fit. So right. it was kind of genius on her part. 
So let's talk about Martel. So Martel has <laughs> went over there to Lewis's spot, right? And he takes his son with him. So this is an opportunity for him to, you know, kind of evaluate Martel's son to see how good he is with baseball and whatever, to see if he's good enough to be polished or whatever. So this is also an opportunity for Martel and Lewis to get to talking about some of the things that are on Martel's mind. Hmm. So he goes to tell <laughs> to tell Lewis, like, listen, um, I'm thinking about asking my wife for full custody of the children. Like she's really, really busy. Like she's all the way over here doing this and doing that. And she got a hundred things got going 10 on. Babysitters. She got ten babysitters. I don't want my she kids over time. here with this and that. And I was like And I was like, uh I was like, bruh. What? If you get custody of the kids you going to need babysitters too. And then here's the thing that gets on my nerves with Bar Bartel. This is fresh for her. So where she used to be able to be like, hey, Martel, I got a meeting over here. The kids are staying in the same house. She just walks out and handles business. Now she has the kids primarily. So when she has these things to do, what does she do? Ding, ding, ding. Like every working mother does. You get nannies. You get babysitters. You get people that you trust. trust. Now yeah. he said 10. I said 10 is too much. Too I, max. I already knew. I already knew. <laughs> but he 10. was You know Martell is going to put 20 on 10. You know to try to make his point. Yeah. <laughs> so Lewis was like, "You, you sure about that, bro? Sure? Like how you? You think, know, cause she a mother. Yeah. Like how you think she gonna really react to this? And he was like, I think she might. She, you know, as busy as she is, she she might be down for but, something like but that. But I just still feel like he only he did, want, he, he only wanted messy. to do that to pull to push her buttons to piss her off. It wasn't that he want full custody of them kids. Mm, now, yeah. granted, he's a great dad. We, oh yeah, we've seen that. But at the same time, this is this is a petty move. Yeah. <laughs> this is a petty get under her skin yeah. move. We see it all the time. So, Lou said, let me tell you something. If you decide to go this route, what I'm going to need you to do, I'm going to need you to listen to me and listen at me good. I need you to check your aggression and your emotions. Better yet, brother, have you ever thought about going to some kind of anger management classes or something <laughs> online? You know, do something, cause what I saw in Vegas, yeah, I feel like if we won't dare, this thing would have went left real quick. I uh, took a told y'all a hundred thousand times. Yeah, cause yeah, cause he he was he was turned way up, like he like he wanted to go and put hands on me. I'm telling you, he sure and did. The thing that gets me is if <clears throat> if what we see is escalated, can you imagine what we don't see? Hmm. That's what all. That's what I always say. But anyway. So say what's happening when the cameras ain't on. <laughs> so let's get over here and we're gonna have this conversation. I ain't gonna delay it no further. Martel decides he wants to invite Mel out to a coffee shop so that they can discuss this. I said you invited her to the most quiet place other than a library. <laughs> other than a library. To talk about wanting to possibly take her kids? Yeah. Are you freaking serious? Man, you should have met with her in the car. You should have asked. Oh, yeah. You should have asked <laughs> Tiffany how to get some keys to that ball diamond that she that she got that day go surprise wedding that y'all can yell as much as y'all want to. Go to the ball diamond or something. Get get in the car would be a whole lot easier than that, Mike. Nah, cause somebody can rush somebody over with that shit. But not when they both in the car. Tell me when to get out. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I've been through some days, man. I don't seen a few things. So you trying to say you can hit a couple people with some cars? Is that what you trying to say? No, but I wanted to. Oh, okay. I wanted to badly. <laughs> badly. <laughs> but I ain't do it because the Lord was with me. You ain't never want to hit me with no car. No, you oh, ain't okay. never did nothing. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. I just want to make sure. But that nigga before you? You know, I want to make sure, you know, you know. That, that one before you? Tisha found out a surprise <laughs> while they was on vacation. I don't want to find out a surprise that you... You want to run over top of me? No, because. just, just, uh, you already know the lump sum of money I had before we, when, when we met and you saw my bank account. Just know I took his A for go. what he needed to be taken for. But anyway, so we had the coffee um, <clears throat> shop, 
And first of all, I was like, Mel, you coming in with petty energy, but I'm here for it because of what he about to do to you. Oh, she already knew. So she she knew. already knew. So he asked her, say, you know, you want something? You want, some, you want a green tea or something like that? She said, uh-uh, I'm fasting. He said, fasting from everything. She needs to fast from everything dealing with you. So they get to talking, and he was like, either he or she was like, Pretty much, how in the world did what happened in Vegas escalate like this? Like we got there and, and everything was fine. And he even said, "I was, I was, I, I was happy to see her." You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I wasn't supposed to say that out loud, but you know, you know, I was hoping some things would happen. But it just seemed like it just seemed like they just took a turn, and I don't understand how they took that turn. You know. <laughs> So <laughs> you you did. <laughs> so Martel told Melody. Now Melody pissed me off because Melody has she's passive aggressive. Sometimes I'm here for it, but in others I'm not. So he said we have a way of pressing each other's buttons because we know what buttons they are. And she yeah. said no, no, we no, don't. No, no, we no, no, not we always. Don't. Martel lies. Lies. So I'm like, nah. You come on know now. What presses but, his yes. button? You been in a relationship with somebody anytime you know exactly what pisses them off. Just like you knew when he walked out of that room and everything could have just calmed straight on down. Your button for him to push is, well, we ain't saying nothing about that baby that you got. Yep. You mm -hmm. know. Anytime she talk about that side cheek, he, he get pissed off. <laughs> so let's not act like we don't know. You know the buttons. Yeah. When we press them buttons. And y'all press Well, each even other. though he the one that created that button. But uh, absolutely. It's just, but it's still a button. Absolutely. So it went downhill fast from that point on. And I was like, why did he even have to escalate? From this part, like, okay. But he didn't yell though. He he he, he kind of listened. He kind of listened to Lewis just just a little bit. He ain't, you know, he he wasn't Vegas loud, but you know. <laughs> he did that passive. He see, both of them are passive aggressive. I told y'all they're the same person split down the middle. And when they used to be together and they were on good terms, I always say they get on my nerves together because they like two females cackling and acting a fool. So they. He over here being passive aggressive with the, I'm very calm and I'm not being mean or nasty. And why are you yelling in this place of business? You know, we got these white people looking at us and I'm drinking green tea. You know, <laughs> when you drink green tea, everything is supposed to be zoom. And you over here being loud and being ghetto and this is not the way that we act. And she's like, Martel, what you're not going to do is this and that. <laughs> and why are you being so loud? But you no, know, you're not going to tell me to shush. <laughs> I'm like... This, they get on my nerves, Oh, they man. got on my nerves. So man. then he hit her with the, well, well, well what I want to talk about is, I want to talk about the fact that uh, uh, every time, you know, you got to go somewhere and you got all these jobs and all this stuff going on, you know. And, 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 ten babies. And you got these ten babies. So she was like, ten? Ten. I have three. Three. No, she, what did she say? I have two. She two. said, wait, 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 wait. You, you got this one. You got that one. So that, 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 that's, that's three. That's three right I counted there, you know? three. I and counted three. And she was three. like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Because when I went to Atlanta, this is what had happened. So, so you mean to tell me that your brother didn't babysit your kids? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So. So, so you mean to tell the me. Part, no, no, no. The part that got me was <laughs> he went to his cell phone. That's the part. So he could read the facts. And every time she had a baby, I'm like, bruh. This is our That's too much daggone energy to write down every time she had somewhere to go and had a babysitter so you could oh, have he the didn't write it down. He was going through the text messages. He was going through the text messages. Oh, he was going, oh, okay. Uh -huh. I thought I thought he had uh -huh. written it down. Oh, oh yeah. okay. He, oh, he got it written down too. Because he and, said, when I deal with you, I got to have facts. I got to deal with I facts. Can, I got to yeah, <laughs> see, see, and what was going on is I feel like, I feel like, you know, I'd be better at being the primary parent because, you know, now I could, I can, you know, I got to. Baby's hair done. I said, well, we're not going to do, we not going to do baby daddy vibes. Like, you don't came in for one Christmas and bought some gifts for these kids uh -huh. and sent them to the salon to get them done, get the hair done with the beads on the end. And now you act like you can take over and do this skip uh -huh. when I've been doing this skip solo dolo for all these months. The like, question uh, is, do you, do you think he can handle them kids by yeah. himself? Well, yeah. Full time? Yeah. No. Right. No. That's what I say. He, I need. Yeah, I believe he can handle them, but he's gonna have to do like like Mel. Yeah. 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 I mean, and and here's the thing. Like I said, I don't have a problem with her having you know the babysitters because you do. But at the same time, these kids have gone through a lot. 
in transition. So I would keep the babysitters yeah. to a minimum. Yeah. This these are these are the stable these ones. These are the staples. And if I can't get these ones, I just can't do I it. I just can't yeah. do it. Or I leave them with a family member. It's even <clears> with that because I I some things happen to me that makes me just think differently. I don't trust nobody. Right. So as the least amount of people around my kids, mm -hmm. the better. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate we live in a world like that, though. Yeah. That you can't even trust. I would trust not play no with games. Your kids. Yeah. Because nah, we 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 not playing them kind of games with yeah. no kids, and they're all but one girl. You know, so yeah. And you know, you can't even say that because the boys are yeah, being that molested to them too. Yeah, much, that's happening you know? too. Yeah. So you do. You have to kind of you know, you know, keep everything at bay. But so however, you know, as much as as Mel get on my nerves, I don't think she would ever ever. Leave the kids with no matter that. I think she could judge that that character. I don't think she would ever. I wouldn't say that. I, me personally, I don't think she would. I mean, I'm not saying that she would not see some things. What I'm saying is that demon right there is crafty as hell. That's right. why I say I don't even trust family. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, so that's why I say I don't think she would. She no, would, not on purpose. Yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah, no, it no, definitely no. wouldn't be. It wouldn't be like, hey, I gotta go to what you call it. Hey, can y'all watch the kid? I don't know you like that. So who's going? Oh no, 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 no. She wouldn't. Uh -uh. I don't, yeah, no, definitely would, not saying that. Yeah, she don't do that. Uh -uh. But that's the way he talking. Like you leave with all these that's ten, it. all these ten suckers that I don't even know. Yeah, and even from from his <clears> standpoint <throat> as a father. Maybe he, and he may even, like, really, like, know these people that are deemed as the primary caregivers for the children. Get real comfortable and familiar with them so whenever you hear that your children are with them, you're settled. You're cool. It's like, oh, okay, my, my kid ain't over here with, with needanandy.com. Need you know? Yeah. Because that's how he made it sound, which I doubt that's the case nah, at all. Cause it was a mama, the uncle, and somebody else. Yeah, she said she got some staple people. So, yeah. But like I said, keep them at a minimum, and so that it's tight on everybody's end. You ain't right. got this argument with him about ten. Yeah. You know, cause people like him will take two and three and turn it into ten. <laughs> so. Or well, twenty six, like like Wanda do. Oh my God. Twenty six women. So then. She was like, oh, you know what, Marta, I'm not going to do it with you today. I don't have time for this conversation. What I will do is maybe I'll just go ahead and go and petition the courts and do what I need to do. And I said, oh, hell, there let's not go. do this. And he said, well, baby, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. You know, I, can, I can afford to do this. And she said, you can afford to do it now, but not then. So he said, well, maybe I'll, I'll go in there and follow people. For, I said, you ready to get scalded in here with the non-existent drink that she should have? Yeah. I'm like, you don't threaten no mama by trying to take, take her kids, kids. Uh -huh. full time and trying to act like, first of all, here is the, the double-edged sword that you're, that you're doing to her. You want to take her kids full time, but the fact of the matter is, this wouldn't even been a, been a thing if you hadn't stuck your thing lane in somebody else and caused a whole divorce. So the fact that my children are even in this position is because of you. you. Yeah. And then you're going to come and tell me that now you want to... Mm-mm. Nope. You'll you you mm -mm. You'll mm -hmm. be fertilizer first. Yep. So, so let's go over here and talk about Marceau and them a little bit more. So because Tisha and um, Kimmy, Kimmy yeah. made up they on good terms. You know, let's go out and go to eat and have us a good time so that we can, you know, kind of just start fresh and get back together, bring the band back together. Yeah. So they go out to eat, and Marcel looked like he had just woke up. He just came from work. That's where he <laughs> came from. I said, they he all look nice and, you know, dolled up, and he coming in here like, hey, I'm here. I, he said I, he had on a polo and a pair of jeans. Yeah, polo and a pair of jeans and <laughs> came in there like whatever. So, Kimmy just got straight on to it. At dinner, you know, you threw around the word divorce. I mean, um, depressed. depressed. Like, what, what, what is going on? Like, is you can't not say it after you've said it. Like, what yeah. is going on? So, Marceau did what most people do. After I said it, that's all I want to do is say it. And I, I don't, don't want to do. wanna deal with it. I don't want to get no help for it. Yeah. So, Maurice was like, <laughs> what? Wait, what? So you're going to tell us all that you have depression, but you don't want to go do anything about it? 
I said, that's the equivalent of somebody saying, my chest hurt. Maybe it's a heart attack or maybe it's gas. No. And that's what Maurice was like, if you don't know what you're dealing with, because he kept tossing around the, well, maybe it's overwhelmness. Maybe it's stress. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's overwork. Maybe it's not. He was like, so that's why you get a professional. No. To go ahead and vet it out. Right. To figure out what it really is. And then you can take it from there. And he was like, well, I don't want to realize that there is a problem because I don't want to be in a position to have to fix something that's there. Yeah. But when he said that, it was basically is, i am already got all this stuff I'm dealing with. So if I go to a professional and they say that that I'm clinically depressed, that's something else that I'm going to have to deal with trying to solve the issue of being depressed. So that's going to make me even more depressed knowing that I'm chronically depressed. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Ain't no excuse. Yeah. But however, that's what he's saying. Like, I can't afford to put nothing else. I can't afford, else. yeah. I can't afford to put nothing else on my place and stress about. Yeah. yeah. And I think we've all felt like that with yeah. something. Not depression, but like if it, like you when you're in your house and something break down. If anything else in this house break, break down, yeah. I'm going to lose it. Yeah. It's kind of that thing. Like so, yeah. one of the weeks that nothing don't go right. Yeah. you be like, <laughs> car break down, tile go flat. You like, what would that turn You'd be say? like, Lord, what Lord, what did I do? What did that turn say? <laughs> to hell with it all. all. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, he had them moments, though. Yeah, yeah. So, I felt it, but at the same token, like, Kimmy was saying, as a clinician, I I know where this can go, and I can't sit here and let you just, just talk this thing away as if it's not a thing and hoping that it would just <clears throat> float away when you feel like you've achieved what it is you need to achieve for this year, that that will go away as well. We can't, we can't do that. So, Letitia was like, you know, the whole thing with her was new. Like, she had never heard him talk about it. And now he doesn't want to talk about it again. Like, Mm -hmm. he doesn't want to. And she was like, I don't know what to do with this information because he won't talk about it. And she was like, I need you to not talk. I just need you to listen. I said, wait. (laughs) Wait. Come on, so. So, you mean to tell me? Yeah, I already know. It's you. (laughs) It's you. But yeah, so she was like, so in a position like this as your wife, you don't want me to talk? Like, you just want me to listen when I feel like that's all I do do is is listen. Mm -hmm. That you don't want me to give any kind of input because ultimately, if you go down because of this unchecked depression, it affects who the most? Us and these kids. So you want me to just be silent about this? That's something I can't do. So she tells Kimmy... Or her and Kimmy had some kind of dialogue. And I said, Kimmy, are you being petty? Because why did you say that to her? Oh, that she that maybe that she, basically she might be the problem? And said, well, sometimes people will talk to other people because maybe there's it's the spouse that's the problem. And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> why you say that? Uh, Kimmy! <laughs> why you, and then Tisha, I mean, she right, though. I mean, she is right, but maybe bad time. Very bad time. Yeah. So Tisha <laughs> had that like, oh, wait, what? So you mean to tell me that... We just made up. We kissed and made up in Vegas. And you go, you go hit me like this? <laughs> Welcome to what you do, Tisha. Yeah. Because you do that to her. <laughs> Certainly when we come up with talking about this side, being the side chick thing, you do it all the time. But I'm going to tell you what did happen. Maurice ain't never stopped eating. No, he didn't. Maurice was like, Yo, my brother might be depressed or whatever. But, but I ain't right let this food get cold. Everybody else was really concerned and he was... <laughs> I but, said, did you but, today? but actually, when he had offered to go to, to counseling with him, that was big. I thought that he was going to be like, yeah, I'll go with you. But he even he told said, Reese, no, nah, I'm no, not going. but with something else he had, he had said too. He was saying, I'm just tired of living the life of always trying to get where I never get to the point where I just know how to have. Because yeah. of the way that we grew up poor. And one of the things when you grow up poor, when you finally get and you gotta, you feel like you gotta continue to keep hustling because you don't want to go back to, you know, that you know that poor state again. So you will live a life of being unbalanced because of that. And he was saying something about, uh, uh, how, how do you What's say that about being afraid to fly? Yeah, like you, like in other words, uh, when I'm when I'm over here doing this, I'm over here worrying that this is not getting done. If I'm doing this, I'm worried about this over here. So basically, never being present where your foot are 
where your feet are. Yeah, and yeah. that and that's one of the things I've been really trying to work on is like being present. Mm-hmm. And and that it it it's, it sounds easy. It's not. But it's not easy to be present where your feet are. It's really not. It isn't and because we have so many distractions now right. like <clears throat> you know for us like I you know our second leg of our you know income and stuff like that is social media. So you're always babysitting social media. So even with that, like I am so imbalanced with that because I feel like if I don't stay on top of it, then when I do have to tackle it, it's a mountain yeah. of stuff. And I'm one of those people, those YouTubers that I don't like my audience or the people that love us to be ignored. Like, cause right. I know as a subscriber, what that feels like when you, you know, you're a fan of other people and you comment, you like, you share, and they never acknowledge anything. So I always try to acknowledge every comment because I, I think that's very important for <laughs> your growth and for people to just stick with you and love and you what you do time. and value. Yeah. yeah value so I get it. It's, it's, it is, it's tough. And it's, I'm glad they're having this conversation because yeah. like I told y'all last week, like when Marcel said that, it hit me with my job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's like creating like creating that balance, and I, 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 I like I say, I I know I talked about it before. It's like I'm I'm not sure if it's, if balance is really a thing. Like you know, because you always got this going on, you got that going on, you got this going on. So it's maybe just riding the waves of if this is going good, this is where the focus is at. But being conscious that hey, this is being neglected over here, so now I need to put some energy over here. Right. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I've we never found balance. Yeah, yeah. I've never found it. I, I, I mean, I've been searching for years. Well, ultimately, real talk, like we <clears throat> culturally, <laughs> we've always been imbalanced. Like we've never had an opportunity to stop to find balance yeah. because if you stop, it stops. Yeah, you know what I mean. So culturally, I mean, I could just speak about it from. My standpoint is like back in the day, day, like I grew up real quick. Like at 16, I was running households. If I didn't do what I was doing, I didn't eat. My right. brother didn't eat. You know what I mean? So I don't know how it feels to not do. Right. Like I always have like three to four things going on at once. So yeah, it's so a lot. I guess it goes back to that thing of like finding something that you love and create passive income out of it so you can stop trading time for, for dollars because then we, we can we see. We own it though. Because you hear people all the time that, that have it like that you and they'll be like, I don't really have time for nothing else other than my business. My family suffers. Yeah. And you know, my health suffers because I got to stay on that hustle. I got I got to hustle. So, yeah. Because yeah. we used to talk about this too. This is way off topic, but we used to talk about this too when we was like in church heavy and we used to have like this front row seat to other people's lives. And we would see bishops and apostles and stuff that you never saw their families. Like they were on the road mm-hmm. for weeks at a time. Months and, sometimes. Yeah, months in other countries. Um, different stuff like that. I used to be the executive admin for a bishop. And their schedules are insane. Yeah. And I'm like, and I've always like. How are you balancing your household? Yeah. Like, how is it that you're getting family time, you know, time with your wife, time with these kids? Because most yeah. of the time the kids are teenagers at this point. You know, how are you doing that? And how are you participating in your household? Things might be getting done because you have the money to make it happen. Right. But do you do you know what color your walls are at your house? Hmm. Because you ain't doing it. <laughs> it's getting done, but you're not a part of it. Like, yeah. are, are you present in any of that? So, yeah, it's like, I think a lot of people, and yeah, a lot of people are imbalanced. Right. From spirituality to Right not. on down, yeah. And some of it starts there, but anyway. So, I guess it's time for all of us to rethink success, man. Like and what, what, it what, means is, to what, you. what it means to you. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty South. Two up. Two, Two down. down. Holla! Boom!